I'm gonna steal. Wait, wait. Hold him. Welcome to the 2v2 match in the BFME 1 online battle arena on the map Pelar Gear 2.22. And we are picking random. My ally picked Gondor. And we will play against Rohan Eisen. So it's gonna be Gondor Eisengard against Rohan Eisengard. Pretty good matchup. I like this one. And Pelar Gear is a huge map with plenty of outposts. So for that reason, map control is going to be even more important. And we are also on the most recent patch version of the patch 2.2 to the version 4.5, which kind of nerfed the resource income from the inner castle buildings. So for that reason, map control is even more important. So my opponent is actually Isengard, my Drake opponent in the front. So for that reason, I like to open with double furnace just to have a bit more better eco. Pichy. <laughs> All right. The plan is simple. Win the game. Okay. Get some worker there to this spot. And go pressure my opponent. It's the plan. Oh, he was not taking this one? I will gladly take it, bro. Now, it's kind of debatable if it's worth it or not, because we will eventually lose the settlement, but I think it's okay, because we will delay his uh, settlement from him. So, for that reason, he will make less money, while we will make some extra money, you know what I'm saying? Let's capture the settlement right there, too. Beautiful. Okay. I think we are in a phenomenal spot. And I don't know what my opponent is doing, actually. <laughs> but we will find out. Oh my god, he didn't take this one either? I will take it. I will take it. I mean, I didn't even need to use Warchant so far. I'm gonna fight this without the Warchant. No problemo. And I will Warchant my ally, actually. Not yet. But I will do it. Get some more workers here and there. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Boom. I mean, I don't need to use Warchant on myself. How am I still lost on this map? Yeah, this map is kind of huge, man. Huge map. I would like to rush Lourdes, but I can't because there are some peasants, so we need to go for the Uruk pit. I think Lourdes is very important when you play Gondor Eisen against Rohan Eisen because um, Gondor Eisen is a very strong duo in a 2v2, but we lack of leadership. So we will have only Warchant and maybe Gandalf later on. For that reason, getting Lourdes on the field and leveling up to level four, 5 is going to give us the advantages in those big fights, late game fights, okay? Alright, so Maiko is not looking too bad because we start with double furnace and that's the reason why I did it because I was kind of a 1v2 situation and my opponent Rohan was also pressuring my settlement so I think it's a good call that we went the way we did. And in order to level up the Uruk pit to level 2 a bit faster, we can also go for the, for the crossbow man. So the way the Uruk pit is designed is you need to get... Oh my god, I can't. There are too many workers repairing. You need to get in total 1000 worth of resources units. And this can be 5 Uruks or you can go for 2 crossbow men and 1 Uruk. You can go for 3 Uruks and 1 crossbow man. It doesn't matter what you do, you just need to spend a thousand to get it to level 2, which is very important because we need some pikes later on against Rohirrim and also some berserkers, you know? And if you want to uh, jump into the multiplayer scene and you are asking yourself which faction you should start with, I would recommend you to play with Isengard because Isengard is not very hard to play kind of easy to learn because it's kind of basic you go for the uruk pit you go for you know uruks to counter the soldiers and peasants and orcs you go for the berserkers to counter the swordmen you go for the pikemen you have only one production building which you can use at every stage of the game you know and none of your units actually falling off uruks are always good in every stage of the game you can combine them later on to the with the crossbow man and with the pikemen Infantry heavy playstyle, that's the Isengard faction all about. So it's pretty strong while not being quite difficult. At least to learn. You just need to be careful about your early game though. 
when you mess up early game way too much you will lose the game in a couple of minutes so for that reason master the early game and once you get a good early game your late game is going to be no problem so we need to beat them into the, into the towers these uruks nice you fall it right in my into my trap now we will use the berserkers Oh my god, he is also pro hit him up there. So we need some pikemen ASAP. But I want to go for lords first, actually. Give me lords. Nice. Okay, we go for the lords. Beautiful. And now we will need some pikemen to counter the Rohirrim. And I'm not using Vorchen for myself for, for now. You know, I don't need it actually. So I can keep buffing my ally all the time. That's that's what the 2v2 is all about, you know. Having the team synergy, supporting your ally, receiving support from your ally. And ally has to carry you. Because you can't really win 1v2 matchup. That's not possible. At some point of the game, he will need to support you. Okay, this is going to be quite helpful. You know, the industry. So I want to take over the map now. There are, again, like mentioned at the beginning of the game, there are plenty of outposts on this map pillar here, and we need to control them as soon as possible. Oh, free food for my ally. Trample them. Berserker is coming, but no problem. We have a Lourdes up on the field. My Lourdes, again, the main goal is to reach level 3 first to unlock the Carnage, which makes them to a very dangerous hero against any other hero. And, you know, especially early game heroes, like, think about it. What can Rohan recruit at the beginning of the game? It might be Elma, Theorin, or Elwin. That's the three possible heroes, you know, can go for. And they, they will all die, you know. <laughs> my ally is doing actually a good job. Pressure my opponent with the war chant. I like it. I like it. That's gonna give me some more time to take over the map. Okay, that's the plan. Outpost time. Now we can creep this one too and get another outpost. I'm not sure if this is what I'm do if this what I'm doing is kind of good because I'm pretty certain that we have a huge advantage over the opponent Isengard player and maybe we should be just rushing upgrades at this point but that's more like a safe way what if situation you know what if we go for the upgrades and we go for the rush but we can't really succeed then we are screwed we have no money and this is going to be more like a safe choice because then you know um And you know that even if you fail, you have the eco to sustain and kind of stay in the game. Come on, lords, man. Finish this already. Draw your sword. Okay, that's going to be beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. We can destroy this one too. Let's use Carnage just to kill him a bit faster. Lords getting level 4. Only one level away. Now, when Lourdes is level 4, it's quite easy to get him to level 5, you know? He's gonna be one-man army with the Carnage being avail available. Excuse me. Then we can always get the missing amount of experience. Lourdes. Oh my god. I will take I will take this outpost to actually. <laughs> I will take it to give me it. Give me it. Nice. Now we have my lords here. You wanna fight? You wanna you wanna come? Oh Theorin. You know. Theorin. Watch out where you're going, my friend. Now it's quite easy to protect the outpost against Rohan, especially in the early game, because he will have only Rohirrim and my pikeman will counter the Rohirrim big time. But remember, Rohirrim in the lead game are very strong. When they have some levels on them, when they have upgrades with theory leadership, they can actually fight my pikemen. So, the game is not like hard counter-based, with some few exceptions, obviously, a Nazgul, 
counters horses hard because they can't fight him back. But other than that, even a troll can be killed by horses when they have enough leadership. And with that also, even horses can be killed by orcs once they have enough leadership. So it's leadership based game. Even though there is still a counter system, so basically on a one-on-one -on -one situation in equal circumstances, pikemen will always win against horses. But for example, an upgrade an upgraded pikeman against full upgraded level 10 horses will not win, you know. We need to beat him in, use the crossbow man. And now we have like crazy map control. I'm gonna use War Chant and Palantir. Chase him. Run him down. I think I didn't use a single time War Chant on myself. We can fight this, no problemo. This fight man, this combo is no upgrades. So we should be easily able to win this. My Lord is kind of lurking around. Um, the thing is, even if I cripple his Lourdes, he will just cripple me back and I won't be able to kill him with my carnage, you know? I wanna go for the armory here and build furnace here again. Beautiful. Let's kill this, pikeman. Uh-oh, you wanna fight? Oh, yeah, nice, nice maneuver, actually. He was almost running it down into my pikeman. Put him into the tower. Map control. Oh, okay. What a timing, man. I'm gonna bring my lords here. Hold on a second. Maybe I can cripple him. Defend. I'm gonna cancel this. Theorian King stands alone. <laughs> you shall not move. I'm coming for you, Theodine. Carnage. Let it be carnage. Boom, boom. Lourdes is just like MVP, no? He's the main reason why Isengard doesn't need a third hero. Because he's like two heroes in one. In one. Like, think about Gimli. Gimli is a very tanky hero, yes. He has a range ability, he can leap, he has area of effect damage, he has a crazy speed. And with level 5, he's going to be one of the strongest heroes in the game. But he has no leadership. Now, Lourdes has, has it all, you know? Leadership, strong, fighter, tanky, cripple. Lourdes, stop shooting my tower, man. Okay, nice. Now we have double hero, and we will go for them. Upgrades now from the armory. Let's make some pikeman, crossbowman combo. That's beautiful. And with these two heroes, we can actually fight all the time. We have so many outposts. <laughs> Holy, okay. I mean, Saruman, if you stay there, you are dead, boy. If you stay there, you will be dead. Oh, okay. He controlling the outpost, but it's okay. It's fine. Get all the upgrades first. That's the plan. And I wanna I wanna kill this so badly. There is Lourdes and Saruman. And I wanna kill this Saruman if I can. Oh, okay, nice. I was paying attention in the last possible second. Fireball this one. Boom. Chakalaka. Triple. You shall not. Okay. He needs to cripple my lords. Don't make the mistake to cripple my Saruman. Oh, he's immune to knockbacks. <laughs> Carnage makes him immune to crowd control. So, I mean, crowd control in this case, he can't be knocked back, knocked down. I'm going to steal this Berserker actually, because I believe he's going to deal more damage in this Pike, uh, Crossbowman Uru combo without upgrades. And now we can shoot, 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 shoot. I should be able to win this. One more shot. Beautiful. May the best lords win. Oh my god, this is... Okay. Rest in peace, lords. Can I get away? Pikeman, come, 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 come. Porcupine formation. Run into him. Ugh. Okay, oh my god, he killed my lords. Just put him in the tower, maybe. 
Oh my god. Bring Pikeman, bring Pikeman. Lur, uh, Saruman is safe for now, but he will destroy this Citadel in no time. With just upgrades and War Chant and Theory Leadership. Look, the Citadel is getting bursted down. Put it some. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh no, he got even the last of Theory, man. Can we not make peace, you and I? Oh my god, he's going ham. Glorious charge, making them almost immune to damage. My pikemen can't fight this, dude. Holy. Actually, my pikemen is still fighting this. With Warchant and Blades. Very tanky units. In the Porcupine formation, that's good. I mean, you know. Good, depending on the circumstances. We were just 1v2ing them for a bit. You see, my ally is making the mystique and... You know, it's okay when you are a beginner, but you need to always understand the game's mechanics. He's always sitting in one place with his entire army. And that's something you need to improve as soon as possible. When you play with horses, high mobility units, you want to split them up a little bit. You want to go one by one. You want to attack multiple settlements at the same time simultaneously. That's your go-to. Oh my god. Now this Rohirrim look actually very scary to me. Beautiful. Okay, now at least we are not poor. I mean, we are not very rich either, because we need to revive our Lords and Saruman. But once they are ready to go, I will move. Aim Theorin with the towers, always. The second... Oh my god, I didn't demolish in time. I mean, I can defend myself. My ally should be pressuring the opposite Isinger player. Offense is the best defense, you know what I'm saying? This skinny peasant, so annoying. Okay, it's time to move. Saruman is here. We are still missing Lourdes. Remember, my Lourdes was level 7. So the more levels a hero has, the longer the revive time is going to be. So losing high-leveled heroes is a big punishment. March to Helm's Deep. Leave none alive. We can fight this, no problem, man. Kill these peasants, please. Look, this fireball. Um, It looks like he has no heavy armor on them. But he has his Lourdes and Saruman. Come on, Lourdes, I need you. Boom! Gonna be using Rain here in Warchant. So, hold on. Warchant, Rain, and now I'm gonna steal. Wait, wait. Beautiful steal with the nice. Ooh. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Now we need to destroy the well first, okay? Don't make the mistake to destroy the statue because statue is not active at this point. We use Rain, he has no leadership. But the well is more important because the regenerated units from the well will regain leadership bonuses. So if you play Eisen against Good and you use Rain, don't focus statue first. Always prioritize the well, okay? Always. Cripple him. Okay, I'm gonna use Palantir. Run, 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 run. Speedy Gonzalez. I'm gonna miss Want I. I'm gonna miss Want I. I knew it. I knew it. Okay. But it's okay. He needs to take this one. Take this. Build statue and well man. That's the power of good and evil because evil factions lack sustain and good factions can negate this, uh, you know, the 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 disadvantage. 
and now it's a phenomenal thing because whenever we take a bad trade whenever our units are badly damaged we can always return to the outpost recover at the well and repeat you know outpost time i want to actually build uh siege works at the outpost here my warden is not available yet, but I will just destroy a bit and then disengage whenever I need, I need to. Level up. More levels, always better. Siege works, furnace, furnace. Level 3 furnace, it's gonna hurt him a lot. And whenever it's gonna become tricky, we can always return. I mean, disengage, you know? I mean, we are getting actually bullied here a little bit. I'm, I'm scared of this all-in potential with the Rohirrim, Rohirrim and Glorious Charge. Kind of scary. Again, my ally is making the mistake, grouping all his units in one place. Outpost time. I mean, that's a mistake from them. But they used the ring, that's why he wanted to engage... Now here is the thing, the Glorious Charge can kill the crossbowmen of my of my combos, but my pikemen are immune to trample, so they can't be knocked down, for that reason they won't take damage from the trample. And at the well, we need double well by the way, we need double well, because one well is not enough man. At the well they can recover, you know, go for some siege. You know, while we're pushing the Isengard piece, let's ram, oh my god. <laughs> Let's ram the Rohan base. We need double well, actually. Well is a big counter to the rain too. And now he's, he used his rain. And we should be kind of punishing him now. Okay? I mean, we are command points kept, but it's okay. Um, then Rohan is glorious charge, always... Oh, he missed the cripple. Will I also miss the cripple? No, I didn't miss the cripple. Now we need to commit. Kill the hero first. Now we need to kill Saruman. We need to kill Saruman, fireball him. All in him. All in him. Nice. Okay, beautiful. Always all in Saruman because he has the ability to change the outcome of the game with his steel. We will use the will of Saruman, we will keep going now. And remember, his lords is down. Yeah, he has tier in leadership, but it's fine. We have triple leadership now with Saruman, lords, and. Don't worry about it, man. Oh, Aragorn? It's an annoying guy. Keep moving. I want to kill this Theorin, actually, if I can. Aragorn is a tanky boy, you know? He won't, it, he won't die that quickly. Let's steal the combo. Oh, we only stole the combo, not the horse. We will need to blast this combo here. Boom! Chakalaka. Okay, I don't want to overcommit here, actually. I think it's too dangerous. There are too many structures shooting me down. And we need to disengage. Patience, my young Padawan. Patience. Okay. Luckily, we have double well, right? Farami, don't hurt yourself. And we can... Oh my god, shoot this wall already, bro. Come on. I mean, now we have rain too. This peasant is so annoying. Peasant. 
We have a huge army, but we can't produce anymore, okay? We could sell, obviously, but let's not do this. Um, let's move now. Move. Okay, we broke the part of the wall. We can go inside there if he wants to. The best way is to pressure both of them at the same time. So they can't really uh, clump into one location and defend non-stop. Because they can't defend two bases at the same time, you know? Here, our heroes are most important. We need to keep them alive as long as we potentially can. On the other hand, we need to kill their heroes as soon as we can kill two. Always hero focus. Rain. Focus, 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 focus. Focus, 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 focus. Nice. Okay, couldn't steal anybody. My my steel is on cooldown, but I want to blast this so badly. Uh, be careful, though. I don't want to go too close. Now, we need to kill Aragorn. Aragorn is a tanky boy, but we have 110% damage leadership. He will get he will get crippled. Now, we can go for a juicy blast here with the Saruman. Kill Legolas. Hero focus first. Legolas is not that tanky. He will die in a second. Yeah, GG is calling it. I know. We have also... Um, Balrog. Balrog of Morgoth. I mean, we kind of losing this fight a little bit. Mara is pressuring the outpost. Go for Rams. Oh, no, 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 no. Saruman, no. Please don't die. Okay, nice. He's safe. He's safe. He's saying it's embarrassing. What's embarrassing? What did you call embarrassing? The Balrog of Morgoth? I hope not, man. Balrog got a buff, by the way, guys. Okay, now we will see the buff of Balrog in action. The Balrog buff is to his whip. So his whip now is also being useful against structures. It deals 1,500 damage. With this whip now, you can finish off the level 3 production buildings. So breath fire and whip. Or you can just go for weak production, weak buildings like the well, for example. Look, well is only, I believe, like 2,000 health. And it's kind of vulnerable against fire. So my basically and theoretically my, my whip should be one shot in the well. Pew! Yes. Okay, now with the next breath fire, we should be able to finish off the beats, okay? Boom chakalaka. What a game, what a ending. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you know what to do. Leave a like to this video, subscribe for more videos like this in the future. I will see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself. Keep eating like a truck and as always stay beyond standards peace out boys